Hello, Mark Crossfield here. Another dull grey day in the UK. Please stop raining. Um, I've got today the Mizuno MP64, my Mizuno MP64, hitting up against the Titleist CB Forged. Let's give you an idea of why I choose my 64 over these and which one might suit your game a little better. Let's get stuck in. So Mizuno MP64 hitting up against the Titleist CB4. So now before we start, I use the 64, yes. So yes, I'm going to say I prefer the 64 over this, but that's my feeling before the comments start. Let me just try and give you an idea of what both of these clubs can and can't do for you. You've got to remember both of these clubs are trying to fill the same brief. They're trying to do the same thing, launch, feel, looks, they're trying to achieve it in the way they think is best, but they're trying to achieve the same brief. So there's a good chance that these are going to come out very similar. Okay. So anyway, as we go on, you've got the bottom lines on both of these clubs, almost identical for thickness. The amount of cavity to help in the back, apart from a slightly different shape in this kind of muscle barring, um, they look exactly the same. The amount of help to non is the same. Offset on both of these clubs. Again, identical. I mean, tight list looks like it has a fraction more, but it's minuscule. And top lines, again, look very, very similar. Biggest difference, chrome to white satin finish. Used to be chrome, didn't know what else to do with it, so they changed it to the white satin. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, because you've got to move things on, but that's really the difference between the CB old and new, really. Um, so look, let's give them a hit and see what they feel like. So let's go with the type this CB4 to start us off, because I've been at this one for a while. Putting it down by the ball, it's a fantastic looking club. It's really, really pretty. Type this make nice little squat heads, which I prefer. Um, very classic, tiny bit more offset than what I'm used to in mine, but it's so minuscule, I'd bet. I mean, after four balls, I don't reckon I'd even notice it. Top line, nice and thin. Let's give it a hit. So I caught that one slightly near the bottom, but it's still flown decent. Again, it's the kind of flight I'm looking for. It's not ballooning up in the air, um, but it's going a nice height. It's not too hard for me to hit. Sometimes the bladed one certainly should take them up into five irons and upwards get a little challenging. Let's give it another hit. Yeah, right in the middle of that one. It feels really, really solid. It's soft and it's forged. You can feel that. Um, it sounds soft. It looks good in the white satin. I do prefer the chrome, but I can understand why people prefer the white satin over the chrome. Let's give it one more hit. Definitely a club I could use. Feels lovely. So that's the Titleist CB Forged, aimed at your better player. You know, you've got to be able to hit the ball to some level to really get the most out of these. But what I notice with these kind of clubs, as I test more with people, is the dispersion left to right doesn't really change between these and the chunky ones that much. Um, that's what they're doing. The dispersion short to long does change a lot more when you start hitting forge to cast or stronger lofts to more true loft clubs. The, the dispersion front to back, so how many you get the desired distance, how many go 10 yards further, how many go 20 or 10 yards short subject to your strike. And obviously that's you doing that. But with the more springier clubs, game improvement clubs, it's always a bigger dispersion as well, where these tend to perform much more similar across bigger parts of the face. Both of these do. And so if you think about that, then arguably these are game improvement, aren't they? If you think of dispersion that way, then you'd think, well, why have a club that can go 150 yards and then when I duff it, like any club, it goes 100 yards. And when I hit it OK, it goes 135 yards. You get this one room, you really nail it out in the middle, and it just goes forever. Where with these clubs, if you hit a club 150, you'll tend to be kind of 10 yards either side of that. More often, not always the case, because obviously if you top it there, it all, all bets are off. But as a rule, from medium to good strikes, the grouping is closer, not left and right, but front to back. So the distance control is often better, which you'd come to expect with these kind of clubs. So game improvement, I think, could be challenged that term. So here we go, 64. Why do I choose the 64? Well, I do prefer that slightly less offset. I love the gray insert to the chrome finish. I like the difference. I see the face better than, say, on the CB Forged. And for me, the feel is slightly softer. And I know that's a cliche, 
when it comes to Mizuno and is it actually softer physically or is it me just thinking of Mizuno softer so I've already programmed in that I think it's going to be softer is it purely down to the sound where well, you could do your scientific tests but it'd be a waste of time because I still feel these feel softer so I'm happy to use them let's give it one more go it's a, I mean it's an identical flight between the two clubs the flight is not what's doing it. For me, it's the looks. For me, it's the branding, the brand I buy into, which is Mizuno, and that's just me from what I've been brought up with. Uh, and that feel a little bit, and that's so personal to me. So both those clubs filling the same brief and filling it successfully. Do you like the white satin finish? Do you like the chrome finish? Do you like the um, tightest brand more than Mizuno or vice versa? These are things that are gonna sway you between these two clubs. If you're looking at these two clubs, Look, even if you're a high handicapper going for a custom fit, ask to have a go of them. Just hit five shots with this and five with your game improvement club and see what happens to that dispersion front and back. See if what I was saying earlier is true for you. Don't be afraid to ask questions with your fitters. They'll learn stuff as much as you can as you hit different clubs. Definitely worth a try off any handicap. If you're struggling though with launch and things, you need a bit more help, maybe just stop at the six sign and then start hybriding up or go for the chunkier versions of the same brand, so H4, say for Mizuno, or even a AP1, 5 iron, 4 iron, 3 iron, and then go down to these. Just get that kind of combo set thing that works really well. Hope this video helps. Post comments down below, and thanks for watching. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.